close our eyes, sing to him how great, how, how great, great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all we see how great. You ready? How great. Come on, let's lift him up.
Dearly Father, we come to you today. We come to you today, God, and we just lift up all that we have and surrender to you today, God. God, I pray that you would just engulf this building and engulf this time and this place, God. We invite you into this place. God, we yearn for you. We long for you. God, I pray that you would just use pastor as he comes and gives the word, God. God, anoint his speech. God, I pray that there would be no distractions. God, that you would just, once again, just enter into this place. No evil thing or any distraction or anything, God, can come into it. God, we love you so much. And we are so, so grateful for the opportunities we have. May we never take them for granted, God. In your name I pray, amen. Bible tells us we don't battle in the flesh. We don't battle against each other. This is a spiritual thing that we have to deal with. And so when we go to Gilgal, the place of dealing with our flesh, then we go to Bethel, the house of the Lord. The next place they journeyed to was a place called Jericho. Now in scripture, if you read back in Joshua, Jericho was not the place that they came to before crossing the Jordan. But this is a place that Elijah took Elisha because of a sequence that he was trying to take him through. He said, let me tell you, buddy, you got to deal with the flesh. Then you got to allow the Spirit of God to come in. And then you have to learn to walk in obedience. Because Jericho is the place of obedience by faith. The Bible tells us we don't walk by what we see. We walk by the Spirit of God. We walk according to the leadership. A courageous Syrian preacher and, and later on uh, a martyr made this statement. John Christensen said this. And I've got this written in the back of one of my Bibles. It says this. You are but a poor soldier of Christ. If you think you can overcome without fighting, and you suppose you can have the crown without conflict. You are a, a poor soldier for Christ. If you think you can overcome without fighting, and you think you can have the crown without conflict. Can I tell you, it's going to rain in everybody's life. The Bible says it rains on the just, and it rains on the unjust. It rains on us when it seems like everything is going good, and I'm talking about difficulties. It rains on us when things look like going good, and then all we see is the intensity when it looks like everything is going bad. I'm here to tell you today this, though, that if you will allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and you will walk by faith and not by sight and not by faith, feeling you can have more of God in your life and you can be stronger than you've ever been in your entire walk with Jesus Christ. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, we've got to get this in our mind about what was about to take place. The Bible tells us in Joshua what was about to take place in that crossing of the Jordan River? In Joshua chapter number 5, I believe it is, or chapter number 3, the Lord tells Joshua, Moses is dead. He tells him, it's time for you to take these people. We had them, and they had to go through 40 years because of disobedience. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to repeat a lot of things in my life because I didn't learn it the first time around. Amen? Amen. Forty years in the wilderness they walked. They had to go back because they wouldn't believe God. They had to go back because they complained about the situation they were in. They had to go back. They couldn't cross over because they were so overwhelmed with what they were going through. But what they forgot was that they got up every morning and there was manna there. When they got thirsty, water came out of a rock. 
What they forgot was the task and the weariness that they had back in Egypt. Egypt is symbolic of bondage when you read it in Scripture. And whenever they, they forgot about those things, the Bible says God told them, in essence, you're not worthy of my anointing, of my blessing, because all you do is complain about what you don't have in your life. He said, I'm going to send you back. You're not worthy of this. But there's another generation coming on. There's a new generation. And I believe there is a new group of people that are wanting to possess and step into the promised land of the Spirit and the things of God that we have never had before. I believe some of our forefathers, I believe some of those that, that begin to just chase everything and every wind of doctrine that was out there, I believe that they set back in some areas some things God wanted to do. But I believe that there is a new generation, a new church, a new group of people that is coming up. And they're wanting to say, you know what? We don't care about, about the name you place on it. We don't care about the title you run across it. All we want is God. And we want to possess. And we're willing to deal with our flesh. We're willing to go to the house of God, the Spirit of God, and see what God wants to do. Joshua took these men, and the Bible says that they got ready to cross the Jordan. you got to understand, the Jordan was not just some little stream. The history tells us here that the Jordan at times was, a, was about 100 yards wide, somewhere in there. But during this time of the season, it could get to a mile and a mile and a half wide. Because it would overflow its banks. How many of you know that whenever you get the waters coming out of the mountains and those types of things, that all of a sudden they get faster? And with them, you bring a lot of debris from somewhere else coming down. Now, they're getting ready to cross over. God's told them, Moses is dead. It's time for you to take up. It's time for you to move them over. He said, I want you to cross the Jordan, and here's how it's going to be. I want you to take the priest bearing the ark, and the ark is symbolic of God's spirit. If you'll notice in here, the ark always went before him. The spirit of God always went there. He said, I want you to take them, and they're going to place their feet in the water, and when they do, those waters are going to part. Now, can you imagine taking two million people to the edge of a water, that is overflowing, it's running like there is no tomorrow, and all of this and stuff is coming down, and they go, folks, we're about to cross this. You see, when, when Moses took the children of Israel across the Red Sea, it was about life and death. Pharaoh was going to kill them. When they got ready to cross the Jordan, listen to me, it wasn't life and death. It was about obedience and wanting more. There comes a time in your life when you have to cross a place that's about life and death. We cross over from the old life into the new life. That's about life and death. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things have become new. We see the enemy that's been fighting us. And whenever we accept Jesus Christ into our life, what do we see? Just like they did in the Red Sea. The Bible says the waters came back down. Pharaoh's chariots and all the men, they drowned. Everything's going up. Let me tell you. In, the, in that area, we have a crossing over. But this crossing of the Jordan is about obedience by faith. They, they didn't have anybody chasing them. This is the attitude of, I want more from God. The Bible says that, that whenever the priest stepped in, the river, the Jordan River, backed up, are you ready for this, 20 miles, and stood up. Like 20 miles, you think, well, that's kind of like, you got 2 million people. It's going to take a lot of room to get them across. So the Bible tells us that they got ready to go across. 200 people going across. This is, this is what happens in our life a lot of times. We've got to cross over that place to get what God wants us to have in our life. We've got to cross over those areas in our life to see what God wants to do. Let me tell you, church, there's going to be times in your life where the enemy comes in and the enemy fights and the enemy moves, but you are going to have to look at that river. You're going to have to look at that crossing. You're going to have to look at that Jordan, and you're going to have to say, I will not stop here. I'm not going to stop on this side of it. I'm going to cross over to the next side. Can you say amen? Jordan, the crossing over. 
Let's look at Jericho. I'm sorry, I, I got into my Jordan there. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm wanting to go to, really. Jericho is that place of obedience by faith. It's that place where, where God's speaking to us. Now, now listen to what God was doing there at Jericho. As they got ready to march around those walls, can you imagine what God was telling those people when they got ready to go around those walls? He began to tell them, boys, you don't understand. This is a big thing that's about to happen in your life. This is a monumental thing that's about to take place. Now, here is where I believe that God's wanting to really speak to some people today about the Jericho in your life. Have you ever been there and looked at something and you went, there's no way that that can be defeated? Have you ever looked in your life and the enemy began to rise up and it began to get stronger and stronger and stronger and you said there is no way in this world that I can defeat this because every time I turn around, this thing keeps standing up in my face again. Jericho was a place that wasn't a little. The Bible tells us Rahab had her house built into the wall of Jericho. That's a kind of a big wall. And the Bible tells us that God told these people. He took 40,000 fighting men. There were 600,000 of them. But he said, I want you to take 40,000 men and I want you to walk around this wall with the Ark of the Covenant and with the priests. Here is the deal. They couldn't say a word. Forty. Thousand plus because of the ark and everything. 40,000 plus people are walking around the wall of Jericho and they can't say a word. All the people here on the first day is this. They're like, what in the world is that? Some people come out and probably look over the wall and they go, you're not going to believe this. The next day, they hear it again. They walk out, what do they see? These men out here again. Six days this was going on and they could not open their mouth. They couldn't say a word. They just had to march. And they had to follow the orders that God had given them. Let me tell you something. There are times in your life when the best thing you can do is keep your mouth closed. But I'm going to tell this wall. You do that. You know what happens? Jericho is going to stand. I believe that if they had not followed the commands of God, the Jericho wall would have never come down. I believe that if they had not walked by faith and not by sight, that the walls would still be there. Six days they had to walk around that wall. You see, they had, they had to get to that place to where they were willing to find the Spirit of God and follow the Spirit of God before the victory could ever come. You see, I said this a couple of weeks ago. Jericho is six days of obedience for one day of shout. A lot of times we want the shout. We want the excitement. We want, you know, we want to... Get those goosebumps. We want to feel all those things. Let me tell you, you cannot live, church, by feeling. You can't live by feeling. I don't know about you, but there are some days that I don't know that I actually feel the presence of God in my life like I do at other days. Anybody else here? There are, there are days when it, is a, when it is a fight. There are days when the enemy comes in and he goes, you know you're not saved. You need to just do this. You need to just do that. Job had his wife even come to him and he, she said, why don't you just curse God and why don't you just die? Can you imagine your spouse coming to you going, God's turned his back on you. He doesn't like you. But Job told her, what did he say? Woman, you speak like a foolish child. He said, I'm not going to study what you're saying. I'm not going to study what all of these other people are saying. I'm not going to study those mourners that have come and said, there must be sin in your life. There must be this. Let me tell you, Job went through a trial because God knew Job could make it through it. That's why he went through it. And there's trials you're going to go through. There's times of testing that you're going to be through. It is your Jericho. Whenever you can't say anything, the best thing that we can do a lot of times in bad situations is zip it. I wrote this message probably about, about a month ago. 
The best thing that we can do in bad situations is just keep our mouth shut. Obedience is, I don't tear somebody else down to build me up. Had they done, had they, listen to me, had a couple of people begin to talk, the entire 40,000 men's mission would be lost. Think about that. How many times... In the church, does the church die because people can't keep quiet? Obedience. I'm going to make it through this. The next day, really? That wall is still standing? I don't know that they were told how many days they were going to walk around it. I don't, I don't know if the word got to all of them. Can you imagine in the morning? One of them poking the other, going, come on, Fred, we're about to walk around again. <laughs> really? Again? Yeah. Well, we're going to shout this time, ain't we? Nope. We're going to keep our mouth closed. It takes six days of obedience for one day of victory. Let me tell you something else I believe in my life. I believe that God acknowledges more the obedience than he does the celebration. The Bible tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. We, we want to live in the, in the hyper. We want to live in those types of things. And we think whenever the hyper goes that God has moved. Let me tell you something. Sometimes in the valley God is closer to you than he has ever been before. In that time, in that place when you're down there, in that place where, where we stop and where we have to listen for God, that is a place where we become more sensitive than we have ever been before. Can I tell you, some of the greatest growth periods in my life have been when I was walking through some of the greatest difficulties in my life. Yea, though I go, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Let me tell you today, in your darkest hour, you can be closer to God than you've ever been before. In that time of despair when it seems like everything in your life is going wrong, the best thing you can do is go into that Bethel, that place of God's presence, and you pray more. If you want to shout at the devil, don't worry about doing it in public. Do it in your private time. You tell the devil he's a dirty dog, that he ain't going to do this that he's not going to do this. If you've got to call out names to him to lay on the altar, you do it there. But let me tell you something. You will never get your victory if you don't learn to obey what God is doing through the times of trial in your life. You will never cross Jordan. You will never cross into that promised land if you don't first learn obedience and following the voice of God. And I tell you, sometimes the voice of God is not loud either. I would like it, you know, if every time I got up in the morning on my iPad, when I logged in, God went, there's your directions for today. Wouldn't that be nice? And I pull my iPhone out. Oh, God's calling. Yes, Lord. What am I supposed to do today? I want you to go over here and pray for so-and-so. And by the way, so-and-so is going to stick you today, and you just need to be ready, okay? <laughs> Can I get a witness in the house? But there comes a time at Jericho when I must walk in obedience. My mouth closed. My eyes focused on the Ark of the Covenant. My eyes focused on His Spirit. He will, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. You see, on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. They remembered every day of obedience. 
They remembered those six days of being quiet. But on this day, I believe there was a different air of excitement because some instruction had been given to them. And they said on this day, on the seventh time around, there's going to be a ram's horn that is blown. There were two different types of horns that were blown. One was for battle and one was for victory. There was a horn that they blew that was to call them together for battle. This was not that horn. In doing some research, this was the horn, as some of us know, the shofar, which is the horn of victory, the horn of celebration. It's the horn that they blew during, during the time of restoration, the 50th year, whenever everything was restored back. So listen to me. That day, they said, we are going to blow the horn of celebration. The wall was not down yet, but they were going to celebrate God before the victory ever came. Let me tell you, in your times, you need to go ahead and thank God for the victory that is coming your way. You need, in that dark hour, you need to not focus on all the negative. You need to not focus on all the other things. You need to begin to say, God, I thank you that you have laid out my path. The path of the righteous is ordered of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that though I'm walking through this, I know there is a victory coming out of this. It may not be a victory that changes them, but it's going to be a victory that changes something inside of me. Let me tell you something, church. The battle is not always about something somebody else. I have found out that in difficulties, it's more about me than it is about anything else. I've got to do some introspective work. I've got to look, God, what are you saying about me? Is there anger inside of me? Is there guilt inside of me? Is there frustration inside of me? I will, when it comes, the Bible tells me I'm going to look to the hills where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Folks, let me tell you, there is a time to keep quiet. And then when you know that God has come in, you need to go ahead and shout a victory because the wall at that point will come down and God will restore those things that the enemy has tried to take from you. They got to that Jordan. We talked about how wide it was. We talked about all the different things. Elijah told Elisha at, at Jericho. He said, boy, you remember what happened here? I can almost think, I can almost see Elijah or Elisha going back in his mind. Going back in his mind, going, going history and going, yeah, it was at this place that the walls came down. At Bethel or at Gilgal, yeah, this is the place where flesh was dealt with. I remember this. I remember hearing about this. Going to Bethel, that place of the altar, yeah, I, I, I remember this. Then going to that place of Jericho. Listen to me, as we get ready to go to Jordan, Jericho was also the place where there was a teaching college act. There was, there was a place, in, in, I'm using modern day terminology, there was a teaching college there. It was, a, it was a school of ministry. And those boys, listen, sometimes you may not get the most encouragement from other people that are spiritual. It's just true. Can we just get honest today? That's why you've got to have a relationship with God. You know what those spiritual people told Elisha? They came up to him and they said, you know Elijah's about to die, don't you? That's encouraging. You know tomorrow God's taking Elijah from you, don't you? You know what Elisha did? He said, don't, don't talk to me. I am so focused on what God is doing in my life that I am not going to listen to anything but the voice of what God has told me to do. I believe that if I follow this man, that I will get a double portion. It's what I have asked for, and I know that God is going to give it to me. So he left them. They got ready. They got there at the Jordan. This is where Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. They could not experience it. Why? Because they wanted to stay at one place and was not willing to go to the next place. There are some people in your spiritual walk that will not journey with you. Don't stop, though. 
don't stop. There are times when God is going to lead you and the people, the group that you're with is not ready to go there in the spirit. Let me tell you, don't you wait for everybody to catch up because you know what happened? Those guys were waiting over there and they're going, you know, Elijah's going to die tomorrow. And what happened? Elisha went on with Elijah, got to the Jordan River, and it was at that place that the Bible says the chariot came down and received Elijah. Those men, according to some of the things I've read, they did not get to see the chariot. They didn't get to see all of the great things. They didn't get to see all of the things that God was doing. But let me tell you something. The man that was close to the anointing, the man that was close to the things of God, the man man that was following God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He was the man that the Bible said received a double portion because the Bible said Elijah told him, you've asked a hard thing, but if you see me when I go, you will receive what you have asked for. The Bible says that mantle fell. Elisha picked it up. And he walked to the edge of that Jordan River, symbolic of that crossing over into the promised land. He could have stayed right there and celebrated at Jericho. I got it. But there was another place to go. In your spiritual life, listen to me, there is always another place to go. There is always another anointing. There is always another touch of God in your life. Some of you are at a place in your life and you need to understand, understand this spiritual journey that we've been talking about. That's why it's entitled The Journey. As we, get, as we are coming into this season, this season of the freshness of God, I don't know if you've been feeling it like I have, but there is a stirring in the spirit. There is praise and worship has gone to another level. It's, it's, there's a, a fresh anointing on this praise team, on these people leading us. I don't know if you have felt that the atmosphere in the church just is almost electrifying. I don't know if you have felt what God is saying through these messages or not. But I, I'm telling you, I, 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 I couldn't hardly wait to get back in to share this part of it with you today. I can't wait for what God's going to do over the, next, over the next little bit of time as we go into 21 days of fasting and prayer. As we go in with all of those things, it's great to see Robert uh, today uh, with us from, from Birmingham. He, he goes to Church of the Highlands where we're at Greg's brother. And, and, and it's, it's great to see him. We are partnering. Listen to me, church. We, Evangel, are partnering with other churches around the world that is doing this. There is a church in Birmingham, Alabama, 20-something thousand people that we are going to be partnering with and praying with for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. This is about unity. They're getting, they're crossing over into the things. I heard Pastor Chris dealing with the things and saying, look guys, man, you gotta get, you gotta allow God to come in and take care of some things in your life. You gotta, you gotta allow the Spirit of God to just come in and saturate you. You gotta allow the Holy Spirit to come in and just explode in your life. You've got to get to that place to where you speak to that mountain and tell it to come down, you know. You've got to let those walls come down and you've got to get ready to use what God has given you. To whom much is given is much required. There is a requirement to hold on to the presence of God. There's a, there, I, I don't want to be an eight ounce preacher asking for a 10 gallon anointing. I want to be a 10 gallon preacher overflowing so that everybody else that we get around, it splashes on them too, amen? I, I, I want us to be that type of place as we get ready in August, I believe it's the 17th, to do our, our prayer walk through our city. I want, us to, I want us to enlarge our vessels so that when we walk 
around and we walk by the schools and we walk by the courthouse and we walk by all of the streets, the places where the crime rate is high and all of these things that as we walk, there's a splashing effect taking place and we're just spilling out and the anointing of God is falling into the streets and into the homes that are there and people come out and go something, what are y'all doing? We're walking around our city and we're praying that the God of heaven will come down and do a great thing. Do you know him? Well, no, I, I don't. Can I introduce you to the greatest thing that happened in my life? His name is Jesus. He came in and took away all of my addictions. He came in and cleansed me from these things. He gave me joy back in my heart. I want to be those people that walk up to the streets of our city, our county, our neighborhoods, and take the word of God and say, I know what God did for Elijah. I know what God did for Moses. I know what God did for Elisha. But I want to see God for Levon Pettis. Show me the God of my forefathers. Pastor Chris told us in our one of the talks he gave to pastors, he said, you need to be able to, to sum up your sermon in a sentence. I took it to heart. If I'm going to go and learn something, I need to put it into practice. Amen? He said you could have commas and it might be a long sentence, so here's mine. You ready? <laughs> I listen. To receive the anointing which is the power of the Holy Spirit, you must be willing to allow God to take you through the spiritual process of dealing with your flesh, experiencing His presence, obedience of walking in faith, and then receiving your promise. To receive, I don't want to just talk about it. I want to own it. I want it to be mine. You remember what I said a little bit earlier? When Elijah walked by Elisha and the mantle touched him, all he had at that point was a touch of the anointing. He didn't own it yet. He had to walk by obedience. He was taken to, to Gilgal, the place of the flesh. He was taken to Bethel, the place of the Spirit of God. He was taken to Jericho, the place of obedience by faith. And then he was taken to the Jordan, crossing over to claim that that God has given you. And he followed close. He never let the man of God out of his sight that carried the anointing. Okay, everybody listen. Today, we don't have a physical individual that carries the anointing. We don't lift that up. All of us, all of you have the anointing. All of you have the Spirit of God. I'm just the one. Well, Pastor, you know, we're going to follow you. I want you to follow the vision I lay out. Okay? But I don't want you to follow me because you put me way up here. I, I'm a human being. I want you to follow the vision that God has given us. Elisha followed Elijah because he believed in what Elijah was saying. That, that's where I want you to be. And I want you today to take ownership of what God has for you. God has something for you. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be Field. And if you go back and look in the book of Acts, this is another message that we can't do right now. In the book of Acts, that word feel or field is defined out as a continual filling. It's a continual thing. In, in the book of Acts chapter two, chapter 2, the Bible says they were all filled with the Spirit. Then if you go a little bit further, there was another prayer meeting that took place later on. And the Bible says, and they were filled with the Spirit. Well, they were filled over here. They're filled over here. That's right. You know why? Because it is a continual infilling of the Holy Spirit, renewing us body, soul, mind, and spirit so that we can be who God has called us to be. Every head bowed, please.
Gilgal, the place of dealing with the flesh. Bethel, the place of his spirit. Jericho, the place of walking in obedience by faith. Jordan, the place of crossing over to receive that that God has given us. Today, you may be at Gilgal, the place of dealing with your flesh. That's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you, if you ask Him to come into your heart, He will fill you with His love and His presence. Today, if you will, all over this building, I want you to just simply pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to follow you, Lord. Today I receive you, Jesus Christ, as my Savior. I declare today I am a Christian, a child of God. If you prayed that today and you asked Jesus to come into your heart, if you will, I want you to just slip your hand out. I want to pray for you this week. This is not anything. If you're here today and you said, Pastor, I, I received Jesus. I prayed that prayer of faith. But today I asked Jesus into my heart. Will you pray for me that I can continue to follow where God's leading me? If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you this week. I see that and that. Yes others while we wait just a moment yes thank you Lord you can put your hands down maybe you're here today and you say pastor I'm kind of hung at a place you know I'm, I'm trying to walk this walk but it seems like I'm staying right here at this place and I need to learn what God's trying to teach me I, I know this is a lesson I know God's walking me through lessons of life I know God's teaching me some things but I keep getting hung up right here right at this place Pastor, I want to move forward. And today, I want to ask Jesus to help me get over some of these things that keep tripping me up. Because I want him in my life greater than he's ever been before. If that's you today, I want you to do something for me. I want you, and, and you know what, I'm, I'm up here because that's one of the cries of my life. Is I, I wanna I wanna let God the little things that trip me up, I don't want I don't want that anymore. I don't want to stay at one place. I want to go all the way with God. So so I'm gonna be the first one that's here today. And if there's anybody else that would like to join me and say, Pastor, that's me. Yep. Today I declare I wanna I wanna get through all of these places so that I can receive the promise God has for me. If that's you, and maybe you raised your hand today for salvation. I'd love to pray with you today. So if that's you, I want you to just stand where you are and come and join me up here as we do a closing worship song today, a closing song of commitment all over the place. If that's you today, just come and join me up here. And he's a name. 